With 2019 coming to an end and the premise of the uh, of an Illustrator version coming to the iPad in 2020, I've decided to list the top eight features that we should be looking forward on the version of Illustrator coming for the iPad. My name is Leo and you're watching Ghost Paper, so now let's get started. So in the world of digital illustration for the iPad, there is of course several apps out there that do a really good job. Just to name a few, Procreate, Affinity Designer, Vectonator, and there are many more who actually offer some amazing features and things that you can create by using the iPad and the Apple Pencil. However, when it comes to Adobe Illustrator, they are promising a full version compatible with the cloud service that uh, Adobe offers that you'll be able to actually start working on your iPad and then transfer your work into, the, uh, into a desktop version and continue from there. But here are the top eight features that I think we should be looking forward for this release. Number one is the pen tool. The pen tool, as we know, can be something quite finicky, even working on the desktop version, whenever we're tracing and adding busier points in Illustrator, we always get those really small kind of controls that uh, for us to tweak the curves of any shape that we're actually trying to create. And just like a cursor, tapping different points will produce straight lines, holding and dragging your pencil onto the canvas will produce curves. Anchor points will be added or deleted automatically when you click on a part of the path, switching between the direct selection and selection tools seamlessly. So there are many things when it comes down to the pencil tool or to the pen tool that the uh, Adobe Illustrator is going to offer when this release comes out in 2020. The next one feels a little bit gimmicky. It is the point gradient. And although I'm not a big user, a user of this feature, I do think that it's actually quite nice to have that feature for the iPad. If you want to, for example, establish a gradient on some skin tone, if you're actually trying to shade um, some 3D letters, and I'm sure there will be lots of applications where the ability to point and click with a pencil will definitely come handy when using the point gradient tool. The next one is something really, really interesting. It is called the construction guides. And I've seen that uh, on the Adobe Max presentation of Adobe Illustrator that happened in 2019. And it's definitely one of the standout features for the uh, Illustrator version of the iPad. What it is, is an ability to take a sketch that is imported as a photo and use the Adobe AI Sensei technology to find underlying shapes and automatically trace the lines. It is basically a more intuitive way of image tracing your sketches into digital illustrations. The next one is a tool of pattern and radio repeat and Illustrator is becoming a great tool for actually creating these patterns. And in this version here, you're going to be able to add a few things such as mirroring elements and creating some really, really cool things that will allow you to create uh, different kinds of patterns with just one element. The next one is a quite handy tool that exists in Procreate for raster illustration. But in this case here, it's going to be for vector. And it's really nice to see that feature added to a vector program. So we're going to have symmetry for Adobe Illustrator. And just to keep in mind that the symmetry tool doesn't exist yet on the Illustrator version for the desktop. The next one is quite simple, but still quite interesting is the ability to use again your camera on your iPad and be able to take a photo and use that photo as a clipping mask to your design. So for example, if you take a photo of some textile material, you can use that textile material as the uh, clipping mask on whatever logo you are creating. This will allow at least for some design exploration before you actually take your logo or your final design into, for example, the desktop version. The next one is a basic tool for uh, these days, at least for many of the digital illustration applications, but it is a, a text tool which will uh, use some of the Adobe fonts, which is a library of over 17,000 fonts. So the biggest plus here is the number of fonts that will be available for you to play with. That is, of course, if you uh, are a Creative Cloud user or part of the uh, Creative Cloud so that you can make use of the library of fonts. But even more interesting than that is, an, is a new tool called Unoutline Text. And say, for example, you were given a file, an illustration file, and the text was already converted into outlines. 
so you don't have the ability to change fonts or make any changes as a live font layer. But you will be able, again, with the Sensei technology and uh, the features within the Illustrator version for the iPad, you will be able to detect what letters these are. And, and this example here uh, is a word uh, called jungle. And uh, as you can see on the screen, and you're able to uh, detect these letters and then change to a font from the Adobe library or to a font, a custom font that you may have. So this is something quite new as well. In many cases, we would have to actually, um, you know, recreate this element, but at least here on this version of Illustrator for the iPad, it's giving us the option to uh, understand what these words and letters mean, and then be able to change into another font. So that's it for this video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Now, if you're still curious to know a little bit more about Illustrator, make sure to check the video that is right here on the right side of this video, which is the presentation of Adobe Illustrator at the 2019 Adobe Max. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Ciao.